tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. What's going on, After Buzz? Welcome to How to Be Your Host. I'm your host, Olivia Gabri, and I've got Jimmy V with me tonight. Hey, what's going on, people? What's up? A.K. Be Your Own Dad. Yes, that is the tag. Twitter, Instagram, go follow the boy, you know? So, listen, something that I love talking about um, on this show is creating your own opportunity. Because right. a lot of hosts now, there's with the internet, there's endless opportunities, but for yourself. Right, there's right. not always like that exact network job that you want, mm -hmm. that exact even digital content job that you want. Yeah. So you essentially just did just that. You started your own blog and yeah. basically it's like a brand now. Yes, yeah. Be your own dad. Right, right. Be Shout out com. to a BYOD fam. Um, I started started the blog back in 2013, 2014 mm -hmm. when I first uh, came to Kella. California, so I've been documenting my whole journey of going from Boston to uh, Cali, of course. So shout out to Boston. So did what came first? Did you want to be a host and then you created um, Be Your Own Dad, right. or you created that and discovered that hosting was an avenue that you could take? Um, so I first came out to California before mm -hmm. actually moving, and I took a class that a lot of people out here have t taken as well, and that whole class was all about um, building your audience up. Mm -hmm. So I knew I always wanted to be a host, but I knew I needed my audience there to do it my way. Okay. Because I'm just a normal person, they're not gonna hire me off the street, so. Right, and so it was a hosting class, right? That's right, yep. Okay, so then you, obviously things evolve over time. Yeah. Hero Dad wasn't as, you know, vast as it is now. No, What did it start oh, off? Uh, what did it start um, off as? Okay, so it's it's it started off just as a simple blog where I would uh, post ideas that I want to do. Okay. And I remember I used to check the stats every day, which <laughs> I do not suggest this to anybody. But I used to check the stats to see how much people are reading a post. Mm -hmm. Only one person. Oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. I used to get so down. But I just always kept in mind, you know, just one post at a time, mm -hmm. I'll ultimately be able to build a audience within it. Mm -hmm. So I would always, you know, talk about trending topics, um, ideas that I have, that I have, S sports, I I'm a big rap guy, hip hop, so I'll just talk about different topics there and after a, after a while, I began to get a response. So it sounds like you were covering many different topics. Was yes. there a time where you felt like you had to narrow it down a little? Because I hear mixed things. A lot of people are very niche oriented, right. and some people are more of do what you know. Right. Yes. Ex exactly. Like I know, for example, whenever I talk about football, because mm -hmm. I'm a huge f football fan, I don't get as much clicks okay. or or readers, which tells me the audience that I have, they're not football fans. But I know, because I'm stubborn, this is my blog. I'm going to write <laughs> what I want. Yeah. So if you guys like it, great. If not, then just don't check it that day. So then <laughs> on the... Just pretend it's not happening. Really. So on the flip side, um, I would look at my response on my blog post and see, okay, mm -hmm which which uh, post that I am doing get a good amount of clicks. Mm -hmm. So based on the, those posts, I would do more of that topic. Okay, so I think that's a major key right there is always knowing your audience and yes. knowing who you're talking to yep. because then that would tailor the conversation, the content a little bit more. So aside from that, do you have any other consistencies that you like to follow in order to keep growing? Definitely just um, being consistent with the actual blog itself. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you don't know what to talk about for that day. I like to share a little bit about my personal life, you know, because that's one thing that I think about when I looked up to a few of my f favorite people, mm -hmm. Jay-Z, Diddy, you know, yeah. examples. I would just want to know everything about them, you know, so in a way, I got to put myself in that light, not saying I'm on that level, but it's like, okay, if somebody's watching me or reading my blog post every mm -hmm. day, let me share a little something else about them so I kind of 
bring it down to a one-on-one -on -one yeah. type feel. I'm not the blogger at that point. I'm just Jimmy V. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it feels like when you bring a personal like level to it, it's easier for people to keep a conversation, I guess. Definitely, yeah. So yeah. it it started off as blog posts, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. I mean, but now you have an online store. I you do. have yes. your own yes. um, vlog and a show, Straight Topics, an interview series. Thank you. How yeah. did it evolve to that point? Right. So um, I'll say the the vlog aspect of it really came from the blog first, because mm -hmm. like I said, I've been documenting my journey ever since being in California, which just hit three years in September. Dang. So it's crazy how time flies by, right? That's right. So what I wanted to do was um, everybody on my Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, they'd be like, man, I, I love your post, you mm -hmm. know, you, you and Cali, you got the sun, you <laughs> got the pool, and all that. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, instead of writing about it and only keeping it on Snapchat and Instagram, let me make a vlog. You could about show it. them. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of Gary V. Do you know who Gary V is? Oh my gosh, I'm is? listening to his every single crushing day. Crushing it right now. Crushing. I just got done reading the book, okay. which is a fantastic book. Yeah. And the one thing that uh, Gary always preaches about is we we will be in a day where celebrities aren't as that high up, and the daily person people will stop their life just to watch that person. Yeah. You know. So I'm so I'm thinking I do some. I think I do some cool stuff out here. Why not record myself d doing it and sharing that? 100%. And something that I learned from Gary, as I'm sure you do, is mm -hmm. you just have to be consistent and keep going. At Got first, to. probably, like, no one's going to be watching you, and you're going to grow over time, but you yeah. just have to put that work in. It's Got not going to happen overnight. Got to put in the work. Not even going to happen probably over a year. Like, True. it's going to take time. So for you, I mean... Be Your Own Dad wasn't popping off right from the start. What's no. something that kept you motivated and kept you wanting to make content? Oh, uh, because I'm a huge, I'm a student of the game. Mm -hmm. That's one, you know. So be, being a hip hop fan, if you want to be the greats, you have to study the greats, you know. So I would always look at um, works of Charlemagne the God. I was, mm -hmm. I would always look at, I, I even read Terrence J's book, you know. A lot of just people inside my field that are mm -hmm. already doing it and everybody says the same thing it's, exactly it took five years it took 10 years it took over and over you know you would think a, a post or a project's dope mm -hmm. you put it out it, you don't get a good response and it's like wow i i put all my energy no into you it. can't think like that you, you can't you, you got to drop it move on to the n next one but i always want to say Drop it and learn from it. And Why grow didn't from it that. pop off? You exactly. know, was it was it the angle? Was it the lighting? Was it the talking? Was it the guest? Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that you can learn from each post that it, it'll just get better and better over time. Yeah, and so now you have uh, your own show, Straight Topics. Straight it's an interview Topics. Series. Yes, interview so, series. So. I mean, aside from it being, of course, you're on camera hosting, but you're also yeah. producing the entire thing. I definitely So yeah. you have your own set. Why? It's crazy. Yo, I have a green screen. And the whole crazy part about it, when I first moved to California, I stayed mm -hmm. in a studio. OG. I really? stayed in a studio. Like you my, lived in a studio? My futon was on the left side. My mom's futon was on the no right side. No way. So we were like five feet away from each other. I couldn't bring home any girls. It's like <laughs> the struggle was real, no! right? So when we finally moved into a more better, comfortable mm -hmm. situation, of course, um, I was able to turn my room into my own studio, which has a green screen. Um, I started off with the smallest l lights. Now I've got three to f four lights. Um, mm -hmm. I've got m mics and stuff, so I feel it's a journey, you know? I feel you. Like, I have a, I call it my Amazon studio because yeah. it's like I just bought all the cheap stuff off, <laughs> off Amazon. and ma But that's what you can That's what you do. That's like, the importance of knowing that you have to make your own content because if things are this accessible to just any common person, like, yeah. why aren't you taking advantage of it? And 
just to give a quick side story, I um the way I got my kit of my lights and my green screen was mm -hmm. from some lady who posted in hosts in LA group. Really? She said she wasn't using it anymore mm -hmm. and she was selling it for cheap for like, I don't know, no more than a hundred bucks, I believe. It's pretty good. So in, I was just thinking she's just not inspired enough mm -hmm. and she's and she's giving it up. She probably so let me profit bought off it this. for like 300 bucks. <laughs> now she's selling it for uh, 100. Yeah. I'm coming up no matter what. I'll take that off your hands and do my own thing. So I think the best part about um, putting the whole entire production on yourself is like yeah. learning through trial and error. Trial I don't know error, about you, man. but like sometimes I'd be like fixing lights for a half hour. I'm like, yeah. what can I do? <laughs> but the thing is, the internet is such a good tool now. Mm -hmm. Like, you just like have to it, be self-taught. It doesn't have to be perfect, too. Like, I know. you would think, I need the top-of-the-line lights. I need the top-of-the-line uh, camera. You you would come to find out a lot of, a lot of I'll say, teenagers at this point, or, or even college kids, they've grown their large audiences mm -hmm. based off their smallest things, which could be their their phone, right? Yeah. In the... And the quality's not all that good. The lighting isn't isn't all that good. But they still have that audience there. So what does that tell you? It's not about the stuff that they use. It's the stuff they're putting out. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's the biggest misconception is like, oh, I, I can't start until I get this camera. Oh, right. I can't start until I get these mics. And it's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel like if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, it's definitely a trial and error type thing. So... In making all this content, creating your own set, doing your own blog, are there things that you had to overcome in order to keep going? Like, what are some of the hardest, you know, things uh, that you've encountered? Okay, so definitely uh, being around the right people. Because mm -hmm. you can get distracted easily out, out here, you know. So, especially when I first got here, I was caught up in all right i want to be out mm -hmm. want to be seen i was at the club thursday friday saturday <laughs> i was talking to people that i had no i don't need to talk to you because you're not helping me build what i need to build yeah so it's really a matter of a uh, discipline between okay I i'm gonna decide to shoot something compared to stepping out and hitting the club yeah so once i was able to separate myself which you'll start to hear People talking, oh, you you not hanging us, you not hanging out anymore, blah blah blah. And it's not that I don't wanna I don't wanna hang out, it's a priority that I do what I came here exactly. to do first. Cause before I came here I didn't really know you anyway, so <laughs> You're messing up, messing up the flow. You know what I'm saying? So aside from keeping yourself around the right people to keep you motivated, yeah. you know, what are some other challenges that you face? Like, are there certain ideas or projects that you kind of had to leave behind in uh, order yeah. to morph into what you're at now? Yes, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person, if I start something, I want to finish it. Mm -hmm. But I know now I've started... A few things, like example, I've got a few things planned for B Y O D. I've got this whole idea of creating a what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, colleges have a curriculum. Curriculum. Thank you. I don't know why Look, I couldn't see you, but mind. we are here though. <laughs> so I've got a B Y O D curriculum where it's short skits of. Um, Things that they don't teach you in school. Oh, how like to, what? How to open up a bank account. How to write a check. How to write. How to <laughs> maintain I don't a bank know account. How to, do that. how to the simple things yeah, of life that we did not learn in school. And it's crazy, right? So I'm thinking, why don't I create a type of program where I can w one day teach the youth coming up? So that's coming soon, but. To go back to your question, I've started that and I can't complete it yet because I know I'm not at the production level yet wise that I w want it to be at. Okay. Because I'm not going to drop it and just, okay, that that was that. You boom. want it to be 100. It's got to be 100% the mm -hmm. best of my work because I know it's something that will live on and can teach for generations to generations to come. So when creating your brand, was uh, did you always think of it as an educational Definitely. type of thing? Uh, just because be your own dad, it came from my own experiences of growing up with 
without a dad. Okay. So, and if, you, if you've ever grown up without a dad, a dad is supposed to teach you how to mow the grass. A dad mm -hmm. is supposed to teach you how to do this and that. Without him there, I had to learn on my own or through the help of my brothers. Yeah. Right? So, I always think of the kid that's in the ghetto that doesn't have anybody. So then who is he going to turn to to learn all of th this stuff here? Yeah. So. And plus, that's um, in creating your own content, right? You want to mm -hmm. offer the audience something. It's like, what could their takeaway be? Mm -hmm. And you're, you have educational value. So that's something that's huge. Yes. Do yes, you feel I like that so. independence um, growing up has contributed to like your work ethic and drive now? Definitely. One, I come from a Haitian household, so sock pot said all my zoes. But <laughs> one thing about coming up in a Haitian household, especially from a single mother of three, she always worked. Mm -hmm. No excuses on the table. Like she said, I got three boys at home. I got to I gotta work, so she worked two to three jobs at a time. Wow. So just w w watching that, you know, it's like, all right, me waking up, I'm saying I don't w wanna do something, that's not a good enough excuse because my mom had no excuse. Yeah, you just have to keep it moving. Just gotta keep it pushing. Well, I'm motivated. I like looking at all, <laughs> when I was looking through all your stuff, I was like, damn, I'm impressed. Like, it's Thank really you. hard to. I don't know, maintain all this stuff. Like, and one more question I want to ask you, because personally, I don't even know, like, how do you keep all of your, like, avenues consistent? Like, how do you make mm. sure to write? How do you make mm. sure to shoot? Do you right. keep a schedule? Do you have, like, a regimen? Well, I'm working on a schedule. Okay. But it's literally every day I wake up, I got to do at least one thing. I got Do you schedule right. in advance, like on Mondays I'm gonna shoot, on Tuesdays I'm gonna write, on Wednesdays? Oh, okay. I'm gonna... So when I filmed the season one of Straight Topics, mm -hmm. which I just dropped the most, I I just dropped the season finale today. So go to beyourowndad.blogspot.com and go check that. But when I was filming the season one, I knew every guest would have different uh, time slots and everything. Okay. So I made sure I plan those ahead of time yep. to so make sure I get everybody advance. And one thing that I did as well, before this year, I would weigh, I would make microwave content, which is I film it that day, edit it that night, drop it next day. And is that good to do? I learned that I don't think it's good. And, okay. And here's why. If you want to consistently drop something, mm -hmm. you got to always consistently film. Okay. Or if you sit down, film something for a whole month or so. Mm -hmm. Hold on to that content and say, I'm going to drop one episode per week for the next eight weeks. But now you have all the content ready mm -hmm. because you sat down and you filmed for a whole month. So then now when it comes to drop it, just be like, Monday, I'm dropping a new episode. Boom. So you make it in advance That's so you right. can just have it on a schedule. That's right, yeah. Because consistency, consistency is key. Consistency is key, And yeah. how do you determine who's a good guest for your oh, straight topics? Um, as long as you're bringing something of value, which shout out to Gary V, of course, because he always says um, deal with people that bring value into what you are trying to do. So my most re recent guest was one of my college friends, mm -hmm. and he started his brand um, four years ago. So um, I've been able to watch him from afar build up his brand, which is merchandise. Okay. Uh, shout out to Free Thinkers. And um, he sold shirts and all that stuff. So when I had him come on the show, I had him share a few tips that mm -hmm. he wished he knew when he first started, you know, um, how do you d do the shirts, blah, blah, blah. And I don't ask around the question. I'm like, yeah. okay, somebody watching wants to start their yeah. own brand. How did you do it? You know, so they're sharing that information there, which is going to ultimately help my audience out, but it's going to help me out mm -hmm. as I went to start um, my own merchandise line as well. And I was able to use what he said to put that into my repertoire. Yeah, see, that's exactly like how to be a host. That, We're giving people the tools on how to right. be a host. That's what it is. All right, so mm -hmm. I'm on BeYourOwnDad.com. I can yes. learn how to start my own brand. What are some other things that I can learn from Straight Topics real quick? Oh, Straight straight Topics, how to become a dancer, how to start your own uh, fitness brand, um, how to be a artiste, uh, uh, comics, one of them, um, All Depth Digital, Craig Smith, 
dropped by. Um, he shares how he got into comedy. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, Dominique, how how he started his 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 own drone business. Wow. Um, different guests, they give you all different types of topics. Uh, be your own dad at blogspot.com. I'm telling you, go check that out. And where can everybody find you on social media? At be your own dad. That is the place where you can find me, Twitter and Instagram. I feel like you're ending out the interview. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to it, wrap it, it up. Ah, okay, let me plug in one more thing because <laughs> I got to. Um, Let's hear it. I've got, I'm kind of going through a rebranding phase but i've got my building my empire hats oh yes which where is can we get a, the merch yes uh be your own dad.com oh, slash duh. store but i've got my new website which is being worked out we just l launched it recently but i still i'm t t tweaking things but it's bmeofficial.com so that is gonna be another level of just sharing uh, tips and tricks and I've also got episodes of straight topics oh. on building my empire and that is all about how to build your empire as I'm building my empire so you holla at me You'll so we can build together. together. Oh, you feel me? <laughs> You're really picking up what I'm putting down. Wave. Yeah, we've been vibing the whole day. So, so BME building my empire yeah. dot com. BME official oh, dot official. com. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and shout out my uh, business partner too. This time I, I did BYOD all 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 on me. Mm -hmm. This time I have a business partner and it's it's both collaboration be a whole different baby. Game. Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> well, I'm happy that you stopped by because I learned you. so much. I know everybody else did. Thank so. you for having me. I appreciate I'll be it. looking out for of course, the drop. Of course. And again, guys, I'm your host, Olivia Gabri, aka The Real OG. You hey. guys can hit me up on everything at The Real underscore O underscore G, and I will see you next Thursday. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later.